In this video I'd like to have a look at the various move order tricks that are available to both uh, sides. Um, let me just illustrate it immediately. After d4 f5, white could uh, start with the move knight f3. And I'd just like to show you how I think which, which move order you should choose in order to build up the stone wall. For example, uh, a move that I very often see is the move d5 here. Uh, but it's a mistake. Um, it fits in with our scheme. Um, because we want to play the moves d5, e6, knight f6, but the order in which we do so is uh, is very important. Here, after d5, white goes c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, and now he doesn't go g3 as in the other lines, g3, bishop g2, that would fit in with our scheme uh, very well, but he simply plays bishop to f4, and after c6, he plays e3 ready to place his bishop on, on d3. So he's choosing a different setup based on the fact that we gave him the option to do so on uh, on, on move 2. Here after bishop e7, bishop d3, castle, it's a, we see a position that actually has been discussed quite often in, uh, in theory, but uh, it has a pretty bad reputation. That's because of the following maneuver. White here plays queen c2, and uh, basically already uh, signals that the king will not be going uh, to g1 in this, in, the, in this game. It's very likely to go in the other uh, uh, direction and that means that the pawn on f5 is actually a target. Uh, white will be trying to uh, go h3 g4 in the near future and break uh, down on the f5 square. One perfect example is if black goes to knight e4 then white immediately strikes with the move g2 to g4. If you don't take that uh, pawn, then g f 5 will follow and uh, black's center will uh, get seriously uh, damaged. But after f takes g4, knight e5, uh, the e4 knight lacks protection. And uh, since knight takes c3 loses to bishop takes h7, <coughs> black is forced to go knight f6 back. Now white simply follows uh, up with uh, uh, castle queenside. He follows up with rook to g1, then goes h3, opens files against the black king. And uh, this is just, uh, uh, practically speaking, it's just game over, uh, I think. So, uh, on move 2, after, after knight f3, it's very important to start with the move knight f6. Now, if white goes c4, we go e6. It is very important to play it in, in this way. If white now plays g3, he has committed his bishop uh, to the g2 square, now we can go d d5. If white goes knight c3, then the story becomes a little bit different. Because here, um, uh, we don't really have a useful move with, with, with black. If we go d5, then once again, white will have the option of going bishop f4 and going to the same position that we saw before. c6 is a little bit strange looking here. I could imagine that even a move like d5 is an, uh, is, is, is an option. But also bishop f4 is possible here, or bishop g5 doesn't really uh, uh, tempt me. Uh, so I think that this is one of the rare cases where we have to go out of our uh, uh, stonewall uh, um, fortress. We go here to move bishop to b4 and I think we have some kind of um, improved uh, Nimzu Indian. Normally this pawn is placed on f7 in that opening. Here we have it already on f5 so we firmly control the e4 square which is so important in the, uh, in the Nimzu Indian. And uh, I think that black is, is, is in a fine uh, way here. For instance, after bishop d2, castle, e3. We could consider going back into the stone wall with d5, since now the route for the bishop has been, uh, has been cut off by the, by the pawn. This is definitely a way to play. And then after bishop d3 to go c6 and maybe later on drop back to d6. I think this is fully playable. But uh, since we're anyway playing in Nimzo now, uh, I think we may as well go b6, put the bishop on, uh, on b7, followed by something like, uh, like c5. Black has typical uh, uh, good play here. I uh, analyze this a bit further on in the notes attached to this uh, DVD. If you're interested, definitely uh, have a look there. So, um, this move order is all, uh, all clear. I'd just like to point out that <coughs> the move d5, as a rule of thumb, you only play when the pawn is already on g3. That is, I think, the most important thing uh, 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 to, to remember. The moment, uh, for example, in this position, when white goes g3, we are ready to go d5 since white committed his bishop to g2. If he hasn't done so, like in this position, then after d5, 
white has the option of putting the bishop on f4 and leaving us with a rather miserable uh, version of that same uh, same stone wall. So that's uh, what I wanted to bring across in this video. I think that now you'll be uh, able to uh, um, find your way in the early uh, moments of uh, of the stone wall.